All right, we're back. Episode six, holy moly, these are flying by. Season one, pie to pie. I got Chris Walls from Ozzy's A Pizza. A Pizza, A Pizza, A Pizza, Pizza, Pizza. Anyways, that's New Haven style, charred crust, robust sauce, thin crust. A lot of people say it's the best. All I know is it was delicious. We had some of Chris's offering, they were bomb. Super stoked to call Chris a friend. Awesome dude. Started cooking pies in his home kitchen, popping up, private events. Now, he's being written about an eater. He is being called some of the best pizza in Los Angeles. The future's looking pretty bright for Chris. We talked everything from comedy to sobriety. It was a great conversation. Chris, I love you, dude. I hope you guys enjoy this conversation as much as I had having it. Ladies and gents, Chris Wallace of Ozzy's A Pizza. A Pizza. A Pizza. A Pizza. A Pizza. A Pizza. Pizza. I hope you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out here, underdogs. I'm with my main man, Chris. Going on? From Ozzy's A Pizza. He said it right. And I'm stoked today. I fucked up. I did not bring the gift. I usually start off with a gift. I've done this twice now. I got your dog a chew toy. Ah, he would love that. I will, we'll get it in your hands. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Ozzy Um, will definitely appreciate it. Because there is no more important thing in this world than a dog. Nope. And that's why I named my company after him. So are you ready? I think I am. Okay. Do my best. Let's do this. Um, What attracted you to pizza ultimately? And who taught you how to make it? So growing up from Connecticut, obviously, New Haven area, hence the 203, got to represent. Uh, we're like known to have some of the best pizza in the world. Uh, Pete's or Abit's, you know, thin crispy crust in a brick oven. And I grew up having that. So growing up, I always thought pizza was just supposed to be that good. And I moved out to L.A. about a decade ago. And I realized it wasn't good. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. So I started researching, getting into food and understanding how it, how it operated. And then what was kind of funny was I got into pizza making because I'm a comedian and I started managing just a chain pizzeria and learned how to make pizza. And, and my hands, I always been like real handy with stuff. So I kind of just taught myself and just learned how to, I burned a lot of pizza, don't get me wrong, but I learned how to cook on my own. And then when the pandemic hit, I just challenged myself to start making my own dough, started making my own dough and started cooking out of my house. And to be honest, we were talking earlier, YouTube taught me how to make pizza. And I think that's a big thing about this generation is a lot of people can go on there and learn stuff, not just watch videos of like dogs chasing cats around. Although those are fun. Yeah, those um, are good too. But yeah, I learned, you know, my idols are like Frank Pinello from Best Pizza in New York. And then you got Mark Iacono doing Lucali out there. And then out here, you know, learning that your purgatory and hot tongue is awesome because my, you guys, before I was even making pizza at purgatory, I was just telling you about that. Mm-hmm. And just seeing the other shops pop up and then, getting to know Sean at Secret Pizza and some of the other spots. It's just this culture here kind of got me into doing it full time. And now, you know, we're at Underdogs and it's just amazing to see how it's gone from just my kitchen to now using Underdogs Kitchen and having a pop-up van, all this stuff. It's wild. It's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I, aren't we all? It's yeah. on the wall at Hot Tongue, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love the aesthetic of that uh, place, too. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, how do you feel about Yelp? <laughs> is that enough? Is that an answer? Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. I, I understand it. I mean, like right now, knock on wood, we have good reviews, but even if we get a bad one, like me and Craig, my business partner, Craig Taylor, shout out. Um, we've decided that once we have our own full brick and mortar, we're going to post all negative reviews on the wall of shame and we're going to put them all up and promote. I already, I shame people that put bad reviews on it because whatever. Yeah. So everyone's going to like what you do. Yeah. And like we make a certain style of pizza that looks burnt to people. Yeah. We were talking about that. Bring it on. I, I could care less. It's just, it's marketing. Yeah. All publicity is good publicity. I love it. You're right. Yeah. Uh, what keeps you motivated every day? It's so cheesy. That's not a pun, but it's so cheesy that like when someone new comes in and tries it and like they literally text you later that night or DM you that, that was the best pizza they've ever had. Or even just they loved it and they drove, you know, LA's rough with traffic. Mm-hmm. They drove an hour across town mm-hmm. just to try it. it. Every day it keeps me going. Even if we have a day where it's, you know, we've had a lot of rain the last few months in LA. Mm-hmm. 
rain out here is like snow in the Midwest, right? Yeah. People don't drive. When someone drives in the rain two hours from Orange County to yeah. come try the pizza, like that's the stuff that keeps me going. So yeah. just making people happy. It's, it's that simple. No doubt. Yeah. What's a lesson you can share from your biggest failure you've experienced in your pizza making career? <sighs> Make sure your yeast is active. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, dude. <laughs> I had a, we did a <clears throat> catering event and I didn't check the yeast. Normally you should, if you're into pizza making, you should, if you're using active dry or anything, make sure it's active, froth yeah. it up, all that. I was in a rush. I had to make a huge batch, so I just made it, threw it in the, the cold ferment for a couple of days, come back, nothing. It was the same size, everything was the same. And I'm like, all right, well, let me, let me work with it. It was like using Play-Doh, trying to make pizzas. And it was, uh, my arms were dead that night. And like, just check your goddamn yeast. <laughs> like, that's the one thing that I learned from the get-go. Because without yeast, you got no pizza. Check the yeast, fools. That is, yeah. that's A1 advice. Bing uh, bong. Bing, bing bong. Uh, okay, Ex explain to me exactly what a pizza is. A pizza, all right. So A-P-I-Z-Z-A, a beats. So think of the word or the phrase red beets, and then you could say a beats. That's how it's pronounced back, a back eats. A hundred or so years ago, the Italian immigrants that came to Ellis Island, a lot of them started bakeries in New York, got oversaturated real quickly. So they decided to just literally walk up to Connecticut and started to like hunker down in the little Italy of, of New Haven. Over there, they had all these giant bakers with huge brick ovens and they couldn't really pronounce like certain English words correctly. So a beats is just old world Italian for pizza. They just couldn't say pizza. So it was just a beats, a beats. But then it's tied to old, uh, these like hundred year old ovens now, but there are these massive ovens that get up to like 600, 800 degrees. The bread goes in super thin, comes out super crispy, charred on the edges. And then what it started with was the tomato pie. The place that started all was Frank Pepe's mm -hmm. uh, tomato pies in New Haven. What it was, it was just tomato was the topping and on the dough, and that was it. And that was what people would get for the longest time at the coal mines out there. And then cheese became a topping and all of that. So when you think on beets, it's always going to be thin. It's always going to have a really strong herbaceous tomato sauce. And it's also going to be cooked well done, mm -hmm. charred the way I like it, the way I've always liked mm -hmm. it. You know, out here people are afraid of charred sometimes, but it's fun being able to change people's minds about it. I know when your bubbles come out black at Hot Song, they're like, whoa, what's going on? It's like, no, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. That's where you get the flavor. You get the umami of it all. So yeah. that's a beats in a nutshell. Well, I'm probably wrong, but nah, that's the way hey, I fuck it. it. That, that's the best way it's ever been explained to me. So I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm here for you. No yes, matter what. No, yeah, that was, that was great. Um, okay, so what kind of flour do you use and why? So we use bread flour. And the reason why we use bread flour is because that is the one technique from the old world that we want to keep. So back when they started, all they could get was bread flour or they would mill it themselves back in uh, Connecticut in that area. So I researched, I looked into different types of flour. I looked in the double zero, Caputo. Some of them, the protein contents aren't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So bread flour, I, I'll just keep the brand that I use as a secret. But we use just a simple bread flour and it does the job. It has the right protein content and that's what we just do because it gets, you want a chewiness in a pizza, but you also want it, the char on the outside, the crustiness. So for us, it's a bread flour for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any parallels you draw from being a comedian that, that help you as a pizza cook or, or a, a business owner? Absolutely. It's just hustle, 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 hustle. Like I currently have a full-time job and I have this. So I have two full-time jobs. I have, but this is my life. And I think when you're in creativity, like it's all art to us, right? Obviously I have covered in tattoos, pizza's art. And like not in a pretentious way, it's just that you have to drive yourself to get there every day and do it. No one's gonna make it for you. Mm -hmm. So with business owning and pizza and com comedy, when I moved here to do comedy, you know, you're, you have to work your way up. No one's just gonna go book you on a show with like, you know, uh, Burke Kreischer or something the day you start. Mm -hmm. Same with pizza. You're not just going to sell 100 pizzas if you put an oven on the street and go, hey, I'm selling pizzas today. You got to build up a following and also get good at it. So you put your reps in, you put in your time, and it's the same exact thing. It's just hustle, but also it's that creativity because I know my pizzas when I started were shit compared to where they are now. And same when I started as a comedian, I was not funny at all. And now I'm a tolerable human. So, you know, it, it gets me there. Uh, that that comedic aspect too, like definitely comes in through your reels as well. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we, yeah. me and Craig, because Craig, my business partner, is it's also funny. a comedian. Yeah, we're like we just want to bring who we are to uh -huh. it, 
And I think the one thing that comedy has helped us gain is a tough skin. We were talking about Yelp earlier. Yeah. Just like people say things and I'm just like, I don't care. Like I've had people do, I've had people boo me. Yeah. I've had people not laugh at stuff I've it's said. essentially what Yelp it's, is. It's what Yelp know, is. Boo. Yeah, it's a heckler. Yeah. There's nothing better than throwing the repeats in front of them and just leaving. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I was wrong. It's just a mic drop. It's a mic drop with sauce and cheese. That's yeah. all it is. I like that. Yeah. How do you define success? Ooh, that's a good question. I would honestly say, I was talking to uh, my buddy about it today. It's just, I, I, it's called being in the wave a little bit. I don't want to sound like pretentious about it, but... When I get up now and I know that my day is already planned, there'll be hiccups. We already know this in restaurant management, but knowing that I have to come here makes me so happy. That's success to me. Knowing that I have, I already have a place to go to every day that, that that's mine, that I, like, I helped create is, is so rewarding and I'm grateful I have that. So like to me, it's not money, it's not prestige, it's not the clicks, it's none of that shit. Cause I've had that. I did TikTok years ago mm-hmm. as a comedian, got viral, all that doesn't do anything for you. Mm-hmm. It's just about what it does here. And for me, it's just being able to know I can come here and like people respond to it. So yeah. whatever that response is, it could be negative, could be positive. Like I just, I love that. So for me, success is just being able to get up and do this and know that I get to do this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was, that was beautiful. Um, Ozzy taught me that. That so. was really nice, man. Yeah. What is a piece of advice that you can give to like a, a pizza maker looking for places to pop up? So couple, that's a good question. A couple of things. One, don't expect every bar to want food because some dive bars just don't want you to come there and cook pizza or something like that. And that's fine. You'll get no's. Second, don't expect to sell out every night because that's not going to happen either as we've had our horror stories where mm-hmm. I've sold three pizzas in one night or mm-hmm. something like that. So there's those two factors. But also know that you're ready to go pop up before just because nowadays the culture, because of the internet, like we talked about, you could buy an uni oven with 600 bucks and start making pizzas at home and then you think you're the next Chris Bianco. And it's like, no, you, you gotta understand the craft, understand, understand your recipes first, understand how to scale them, mm-hmm. all those things before even going to pop up. Cause then, you know, it's gonna be a loss. And also restaurants are a loss for a long time. Mm-hmm. You're very lucky to get into that area of where you're making money. Yeah. So just understanding that you're at a loss for a while and just go to do it for fun. Don't do it to make money. Like if you're gonna pop up, use it as a marketing tool. Use it to go out there and get your, you know, Ozzy's pizza or Nick's pizza or whatever, you know? Yeah. Get your name out there. Cause at the end of the day, you're, there's so many people that can make pizza. You just, what makes you stand out? It's, yeah. You know, that's what, I just have that drive and understand it's gonna, you're gonna fail. Yeah. And just keep going. Yeah. Great advice. Thanks. Okay. You have gotten some kind words from different publications. Recently, you were praised by over, over, under himself, Farley Elliott. Yes. That's a big deal. Uh, how do these re- uh, reviews affect your confidence and your business? It uh, definitely reaffirms my confidence because there's days where I'll make 100 pizzas and I think that they're all shit. And that's just how I am. That's how I operate. I told you off camera, but I got sober a couple years ago. So, like, I used to deal with drugs and the drinking as my way of dealing with confidence. Now I don't have that. So my confidence comes from pizza making, just knowing that I can do it physically. And so when these reviews come out, it's kind of like, it's, it's wonderful. It's like, it's like a hug from an ex-girlfriend. It's like, oh, good to see you, but then I don't need you around right now. Just get out of my head kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. It's like wonderful, like Farley, thank you for coming by. Thanks for everyone that's come and supported us, but it just keeps me going. If anything, it's just affirming that I need to work harder. Because like one review is not just going to keep you going. Uh-huh. Like you, you, we want more and you want to bring it out there. So yeah, it just keeps, gives me more motivation to keep going. Hell yeah. Yeah. What is the greatest band of all time and why? Oof. Uh, if I was 15, it was ACDC. If I was 21, it was Metallica. Right now, my favorite band's Four Years Strong. It's like nice. my favorite Hell band. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I have a tattoo of one of my favorite songs by them on here. It says, Go Down in History. And I actually got that when I started the pop-ups because yeah. I was like, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down to Blaze of Glory and that song just resonates. So like, I love pop punk. So like, I'll give you my top five. So like right now, top five ever, Four Years Strong, Blink-182, August Burns Red, Metallica. Is that five? Sure. Yeah. Five. There's so, Those I are mean, all great bands. I love every, I love, love everything. And then sometimes I'll throw on some 80s pop, but, but like, I, I, and then my other thing I love about making pizza is that I, for the first time ever, I have a job where I can blast music. Oh yeah. My music. Mm-hmm. And not have to listen to what's 
being played in Whole Foods or something, right? Yeah. I can play whatever I want, and it goes into the pizza. And I love it. So, like, yeah. Those all are those my, things matter, man. Yeah, dude. It's all about just living that flow, you know? Mm-hmm. It's great. When you do a pop-up somewhere, do you, uh, I, I think we already asked, I mean, I talked to you about this off camera. When, when yeah. you do a, pop, uh, a pop-up a pop somewhere, do you ask for a guarantee or do you fly by the seat of your pants? We fly by the seat of our pants uh, in the beginning, for sure, when you're building the name up. Now, if there's like places or festivals that want to have us, we'll talk about guarantees, especially if it's a catering situation. If we cater a party, a private event, we always ask for a guarantee and a deposit. Yeah. But um, if it's a new venue that will give us a big marketing push, we're always just fly by because at the end of the day, it may not be monetary value you get, mm-hmm. but you'll get inherent value for marketing just by exposure. Going exposure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked, I did it at a bar one time, which will remain nameless. That said, there was going to be a huge event and we get there and there was no event and we sold three pizzas and we were hidden in the parking lot and you just live and learn. Yeah. You throw away the dough, you smoke a half a bag of cigarettes and you go yeah. to bed. Oh, and man. you just deal with it. Just sucks putting that dough in the garbage. There's nothing worse because no. it's all flimsy and you can't even like throw it at your business partner. It's just like, it's just hell. Just throw it at the bar. Yeah. Uh, what is it, one piece of equipment or an ingredient that you would not be able to live without and that you would recommend to everyone? Uh, a great, 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 great peel. You need an amazing, I use bamboo wood, but a really good pizza peel to slide them in the oven. Because mm-hmm. no matter if you're using like what we do with the, with the brick oven where we're sliding the pizzas around, or if you're doing a deck oven, you need a real easy peel to get your pizzas in and out. And I've had the same bamboo one for since I started, and they're just easy to maneuver. And like once you have that, you can have that thing last for years. And that's something I learned from watching all those people we were talking about, like the legends. Like mm-hmm. they, some of them build their own peels. But yeah, a pizza peel, get it on Amazon, thirty bucks. Okay. I recommend bamboo, all and right. like it just works. Like you, you don't have that, you can't. Can't even do pizza at home, I think. Because a lot of people try to like put it on from like a metal pan into there. It's like, yeah. no, just get a peel, get some cornmeal, learn how to slide it off. And that's the best way to start. Do you use cornmeal? I do, yeah. Is, is that a New Haven thing? Yeah, some places just use flour, but the ones that I love the most use cornmeal. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a bitch to clean up, but it makes the nuttiness and the crunchiness on the bottom. Yeah, no doubt. Who or what is your greatest inspiration? This is, okay, again, the pun, but... My dog, Ozzy, I got him six years ago when I was going through a rough time out here when I wanted to move back home. And when I got him, it was my first pet ever. And when that dog, since day one, has looked at me with those eyes, the unconditional love of like, just come home. And as long as you're happy, I'm happy. And even if you're not happy, I'll be happy for you, Dad. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me going. Hell yeah. And like, those are those little things that like, you can't really, I never really verbalized that before. Yeah. But literally, it's like, I come home and what's funny is, he loves it when I come home now because I smell like pizza. Of course. So he's like, oh, you got treats, you got treats. And like, it's great. And it's rewarding too because, you know, single guy, I don't have kids. But like one day when I do, I can tell him about Ozzy and tell him all about this stuff. And it's like, it's, that's, that's what it's about. Can you name a book or an article or someone we should check out to make us better people or, or a baker? Uh, yeah, the book, um, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Great book. Yeah, I think his name is Mark Manson. I believe that's his, the author's name. It's fantastic. That I read during the pandemic and started to change my mindset so much. And yes, it's about not giving a fuck, but it's really about not caring what people think of you. Uh And that started to change for me over the last year because I was always, especially when I was not not sober, you always think about what other people judge you and all this stuff. Like we were saying, I don't I don't care anymore. Sure. My little voice maybe make me care. I could care less what you think of me. Yeah, I make pizza. I smile. I will. I will talk to you for hours about whatever. But uh-huh. if you if you treat me or my family or my friends bad, then you'll see the other side of it. Yeah, that's just how it is. And that's I don't care what people think. And I'm proud to say that now, in a good way, not an asshole way, but a good way. So many people I mean, use a lot of their time worrying about what others think of them. It's exhausting, and especially when you put yourself out there. When you're on the internet, you're 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 selling pizza. You're giving yourself away. Yeah, you know. You, you leave yourself up for someone to tear you down. You nailed it. And you do the reels, too, with Hot Tongue. Like, we give ourselves away. Yeah. Not just with food, but, like, our whole being mm-hmm. with the reels and humor or whatever. Yeah. That's a lot. How much dough do you usually bring to a pop-up? Depends. If, it, if it's going to be, like, a certain amount of hours. Like, that's one thing we will ask. Go back to that pop-up question. Always ask how many hours they want you there. See if there's an event, see if there's something going on so there's value added for you being there. Mm-hmm. But if it's like a three-hour event and there's one oven, we're doing about 40 to 50 doughs. 
for that amount of time. So like we're pumping out the oven's going at least like one every 90 seconds, something mm -hmm. like that. And then we'll stop because that's the ratio we want. We could do upwards of a hundred or so, but it's just me and Craig. Yeah. So we do what we want and then we just, we cut it off. I wanted to ask you this. I usually do the music question, but because you're a comedian, who, who's the funniest person in the world? Oof. Or the, the greatest comedian of all time. Well, funniest person in the world is my dad because he's okay. just insane. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's nuts uh, in all the good ways. But funniest comedian in the world, you know, Mitch Hedberg. Because when I, growing up, <clears throat> that guy, I, that was the only comedy album I owned mm -hmm. when I was in high school and dating myself. But, like, that was the best. And he's, like, those jokes still kill me to this day. So, like, Hedberg for sure. God rest. Good dude. R.I.P. Yeah. Okay, last question. Oof. Okay. What makes you so good at what you do? Because I, I just fucking love it. And if you love what you do, you're going to be good at it. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Mic drop. It's a great way to end it. Chris, Ozzy's, a pizza. Where do we go to, to find you, to interact with you, to check you out? Simple enough. So we're inside uh, Underdog's Sports Bar in Glendale right on Brand Boulevard, across from the wonderful Americana Mall that a lot of Californians love. We're here Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays right now, but starting in February, we'll be here four nights a week. So go on our Instagram, Ozzy's a Pizza. Follow us so you can see the updated hours. But all you gotta do is to order, you can call the number when we're open, five to nine on those nights, or you can DM me for now and pre-order, which is I recommend, because we've been selling out a lot. But it's real simple, there's a great, so people hate parking in LA, right? There's a free parking garage right behind Underdogs. Unheard of. On Harvard Boulevard, 90 minutes for free. That's plenty of time to eat pizza. 100%. So when we're here, that's where we're at. And then when we pop up, we just put it on our stories and our Facebooks and stuff so people can just see it. And that's it. But come to Underdogs. Come support them. Support us. Follow along on Instagram. Chris is funny as fuck. Thank you. Appreciate that. We try to get people. We do have a bit of a ranch battle going on. We got to keep This guy keep loves going. ranch low key, dude. <laughs> I'm low key, I bet Ozzy yeah, takes baths yeah. in it, dude. If I had a side salad from Buffalo Wild Wings, I love ranch. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You just dip that fucking pizza in there. Oh my God. I love it. I almost threw up. A little in your mouth. But hey, that's what it's all about, is differences. Yeah. But I we love can it. put those behind us. Absolutely. Thank you again for doing this. Pizza this was conquers all. Legendary. Yeah, dude. Thank Pleasure. you so much. Thank you guys. We out. <laughs>